and, and we knew we were out there. And for that first whole month, uh, we didn't have any rest at night because you didn't know when you're going to have a, an air raid. Uh, but right now, I have a trouble going to sleep at night. I still do. You still do? Mm -hmm. 60 years later, you still have trouble sleeping at night. Well, after the plane hit you, what type of damage did it do? Minimal, really. It, uh, it didn't put us out of commission. It uh, blew up. Uh, actually, it hit in places that were not uh, sinkable or whatever. They were, uh, we filled them with uh, cement and whatever they could and passed them till we came home. Then uh, did they send you home right away after you were hit or did you keep? We stayed out there, yeah. From, from. So you went in the service in basically 41 and stayed till 46, five yeah. years worth. Yeah. So you went through the duration of the war. Right. Did you ever think we were gonna lose no, no. I figured we had plenty of uh, know-how to take care of them. I really did. And then when the uh, Germans surrendered, what were your thoughts? Holy cow, if you could have been there that night, you'd have, you thought the world would come to end. Every ship that was in the harbor had in a weetong. I don't care what, if it was just a tugboat. Every ship that was out there, Whatever gun power they had, they set it off that night. <laughs> if, you, if you think that wasn't a sight, and if that wasn't scary, because all of those bombs and everything, they didn't even set bombs off, they set everything off that night. So then you knew that Germany was defeated and your final push to come home yeah. was Japan. Yeah. So when the final word came that Japan was going to surrender, yeah. what were your feelings at that point? Well, I figured it was going to go home pretty quick. That's what I felt. And that's what you wanted was to come home? Yeah. You know, you'd, you'd served your time, you wanted to get out of there. Is there a memory of that? that sticks out more than any of the others of your time in the service? Well, just when that fellow and I were sitting on top of the air conditioner or whatever it was out there, right there, that was the only time that I really thought I'd had it. I mean, uh, my prayer was you wouldn't take me home in a box. That, that's true. So when the war was over and they sent you home, how much longer was it before you finally got home? Not too long. I know, I know one thing, I was very happy to come home. And all the guys around me were too. Now if you went in the service in uh, 39 and basic, or uh, 41, excuse me, 41, you probably really, you'd been three or four years away without being home? Probably, yeah. Three years, three months, and three days. Okay. <laughs> that you were at war. Yeah. Okay. And then what was something when you thought, when the war was over, you said, I'm going to go home. Is there something you said, man, I'd like to do when I get home? No. Okay. Just, be just, just be with your family. Was stationed at Okinawa on June 21st, 1946. The kamikaze pilots directed a flight and scored a hit on the USS Kenneth Whiting. So you said Tokyo Rose said on the radio yeah. that we're going to do kamikazes on you. Tonight. Tonight? Kenneth Whiting 
we've got your number of Tokyo Rose. <laughs> what did you think of that? <laughs> well, kind of believed it. <laughs> uh, yeah. And what do you remember about that, the Kamikaze? You were on the top deck? Yeah, I was on top deck and, and there was planes along the front line there. And these two planes come out of behind that and started up on the top. And I was looking out there and so was the other guy. He says, There's, they're coming. And, and there was two planes came over. And like I say, you almost shake their hands. They was that close to you. And then they <laughs> right on by like that. But they were Japanese planes. Uh, then the one that hit your ship, did you see that? I, I didn't see it hit, but I seen it right after it hit. And it it, uh, it put part of our ship out of commission, but not all of it. And uh, you know there's a quite a bit to a ship. It's about like a city, you know, it's got everything on it. And uh, Were you part of putting a fire out or your battle station when the, the plane had hit? No, that, that was the fire control took care of that because it was up about a halfway on the side of the ship. It was not, see I was there on the south end of it uh, on the uh, upper uh, deck there and so actually where it really, the plane hit, it was uh, uh, above me by uh, 100 feet or so where it actually hit. You have a hard time still with your your war battles? Well, with, with that one there I do, yeah, with the Kamikaze job sets. Uh, even coming up to that, all the nights we set out there waiting for them to hit us, you know, and, and didn't, uh, could have. We could have been right in the mix. You see, when that was over with, the Japanese had used all of their uh, ways of doing any damage to us. I mean, they, they, uh, they even, well, the Kamikazes, you see, were uh, their own ships that they were getting rid of t to fight us, you know, so. Uh, they had to be whipped, you know, because uh, there was no, no place else to go. That was all of the armament they had. They had them. They had themselves down to where they didn't have nothing left. At that point was the Kamikaze pilots. Right. Yeah. Well, the fact that you spent all those nights thinking you might be hit, you know, that took its toll on you too. I mean, it, uh, when you go to bed at night, I'm not sure it isn't gonna. Uh, something sink here or whatever, you know, you, it's, it's got to make a mark. Um, Gerald Dreyer, he uh, was my dad's neighbor, and uh, uh, my brother was hauling manure for him. He lived right just down the road a little bit, and he was hauling manure for him. And when Gerald, he never knew me, he never met me. But he told Bill, he says, when I got home, he wanted me to come over, he wanted to talk to me. So Bill reported to me that he wanted to talk to me, and this was on the 8th of January of 46. And so I didn't have any idea what he had in mind or what I was going to do. So uh, I went over. I remember getting on the porch there. It was cold below zero. And he come to the door and he, he says, I suppose you're Richard Dole. And I said, I am. He says, well, I'm Gerald Dreyer. Give me his hand and says, glad to meet you. Come in, I want to talk to you. I said, well, what now do you want to talk about? And anyway, we got in there. He bought the first words. He says, I want to rent you my farm. I said, you want to do what? He said, I want to rent you my farm. He'd gotten burned the year before, and so he, he was kind of incapacitated. And uh, anyway, before I left the, uh, his house, I rented that farm, 
I'm a third and two thirds. And I, and I uh, he didn't have a place for me to get married there, so I, uh, 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 how'd I do it? Uh, oh, then I rented the farm down to Hubbard of, of uh, Ernest Buddy, and then I had a place to live. After returning home, Richard Dole stayed in the Owl Falls area. Richard Dole, a family man, a faithful man, an American soldier.